Good morning students. Today, we will study the unit 1 of MED002, that is what is sustainable development. Let's start with its introduction. Here you can see the definition of sustainable development. Sustainable development is a development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And this definition came from the Brundtland Report of 1987, which highlighted the challenges like climate change, inequality, and the unsustainable use of resources. Sustainable development serves as a guiding principle for the global development by maintaining a balance between economic growth and environmental preservation and also social equity. This concept emerged as a response to growing concerns about resource depletion and environmental degradation. Now, turn to next slide, key concepts of sustainable development. Let's see, what are the key concepts of sustainable development? Before understanding the concept of sustainable development, we need to understand what is sustainability and what is development. Sustainability is all about using resources wisely to ensure that they remain available for future generations also. This principle emphasizes the importance of balancing our current needs with the ability of the environment to recover itself over time. For example, renewable resources like forests should be used at a rate that allows natural regeneration. When we cut down trees, it's essential to compensate for this loss through practices like afforestation and reforestation. Where, afforestation refers to the process of creating forests in areas where there were no forests. It involves planting of trees on barren or unused lands to establish a new forest ecosystem. Whereas, reforestation refers to replanting trees in areas where forests were previously cut down or degraded. Its goal is to restore the forest to its original state and repair the damage caused by deforestation. While managing renewable resources is important, we must also address the use of non-renewable resources, such as oil. These resources should be consumed judiciously and we should actively invest in sustainable alternatives like renewable energy sources to ensure a long-term balance. Another key aspect of sustainability is pollution control. This involves keeping emissions within the environment's natural capacity to absorb and neutralize them without causing harm. By managing pollution, we can help maintain the health of ecosystems and reduce the strain on natural processes. So, sustainability is all about using resources wisely so that they remain available for future generations also. It's about finding the right balance between the needs of today and future generations as well. Second key concept is development. Development means improving human lifestyle or well-being by creating opportunities, prosperity and freedom. For example, Sobhagya scheme launched by Indian government focuses on rural electrification. This scheme targets to improve the lives of rural population of India sustainably. And now we will see what is the sustainable development. The concept of sustainable development integrates both the environmental care and economic growth. For examples, National Solar Mission and Swachh Bharat Abhiyan where National Solar Mission is for promoting renewable energy and Swachh Bharat Abhiyan is for reducing the plastic waste. Let's move to the next slide, which is critiques of the growth model. We need to apply new approach to take care of environment as well as the economic growth because the techniques of traditional economic growth focuses primarily on GDP growth and often ignores its social and environmental perspective. For instance, Industrial growth in the West historically relied on resource extraction from colonies. This exploitation left developing nations impoverished as their resources were depleted without benefiting local communities and economies. Similarly, rapid GDP growth can also increase inequality as seen in India's urban-rural divide. For example, Cities like Mumbai benefit from better infrastructure and opportunities, while rural areas face persistent poverty and limited resources. Now let's come to our next slide, Challenges of Sustainable Development. 
The first challenge we face is industrialization. Industrialization is a major driver of technological progress and economic growth. It helps to increase GDP and improve living standards at many places. But when industrialization happens without proper regulation, it can lead to serious environmental damage and social inequalities. One very good example for this is Bhopal gas tragedy. You must have heard about that. That was a tragic disaster that happened because safety standards were ignored. And this resulted in a huge loss of life and lasting environmental damage that still affects the region till now. It's an example of what can happen if we prioritize growth over safety and responsibility. And Bhopal gas tragedy clearly illustrates the consequences of neglecting safety standards. Second challenge is urbanization. Urbanization creates challenges like loss of agricultural land, strain on civic amenities such as water and sanitation, and growth of slums as seen in cities like Mumbai. Third challenge is inequities in resource utilization. Developed nations consume resources disproportionately. For instance, the per capita energy consumption of a US citizen is far greater than that of an Indian citizen or of any developing nation. And as a result, developing countries, in trying to keep pace with developed nations, are forced to over exploit their resources. Let's move to next the slide, which is about the origin of sustainable development. The concept of sustainable development began to take shape in 1960s as a response to growing environmental crises. In 1962, Rachel Carson wrote a book named as Silent Spring, and in this book, he exposed the harmful effects of pesticide on wildlife and raised awareness about these environmental issues. And in 1972, a report was published by the Club of Rome to warn about the consequences of unchecked economic expansion, emphasizing that if humanity kept growing without limits, resources would eventually run out. The Stockholm Conference, held in 1972, brought nations together to address environmental problems, marking a pivotal moment in global cooperation. Later in 1987, Brundtland Report was published, which formalized the concept of sustainable development, and in 1992, the Earth Summit introduced key frameworks such as Agenda 21 and Rio Declaration. Agenda 21 was all about community participation and the Rio Declaration advocated sustainable global policies. Now, let's continue to next slide, Dimensions of Sustainable Development. Sustainable development has three interconnected dimensions. The first dimension is environmental sustainability, which focuses on preserving natural ecosystems while using resources responsibly. For example, India's Green India mission promotes afforestation and efforts like Namami Gange aim to clean and rejuvenate the river Ganga. The second dimension is economic sustainability. Economic growth should benefit everyone, especially the less fortunate, and ensuring that no one is left behind. Programs like Skill India support small-scale industries, while renewable energy initiatives, such as solar panel production, also contribute to long-term economic growth. And third dimension is social sustainability, which ensures fair treatment, good health, and access to education for all. Like, the Midday Meal Scheme addresses malnutrition and promotes school attendance, while campaigns like Digital India enhances digital literacy and inclusivity. Turn now to slide 8, Principles of Sustainable Development. There are four important principles of sustainable development. The first is intergenerational equity, which means that today's development must safeguard the needs of future generations. An example of this is banning single-use plastics to reduce long-term environmental harm. The second principle is intragenerational equity, which emphasizes fair resource distribution within the current generation. For example, India's Food Security Act ensures affordable food for vulnerable populations. The third principle is the caring capacity of ecosystems. This principle involves respecting the environment's ability to sustain human activity. 
For example, regulating mining in sensitive areas like Western Ghats is essential to protect the region's rich biodiversity and fragile ecosystems from deforestation and habitat destruction. The fourth and final principle is participatory governance, which involves engaging local communities in decision-making processes. Like Panchayati Raj empowers grassroots governance and ensures local involvement in sustainable initiatives. Our next slide is about global frameworks. The Earth Summit in 1992 was a landmark event where world leaders came together to discuss sustainable development. It resulted in two key outcomes, Agenda 21, which emphasized community participation, and other one as Rio Declaration, which focused on sustainable global policies. In 2015, the United Nations introduced Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, to address challenges like poverty, inequality, and environmental degradation. There are 17 SDGs aimed at achieving a sustainable future by 2030. India has made significant progress on several goals, including Goal 7, which promotes clean energy through initiatives like the International Solar Alliance, and Goal 6, which focuses on improving sanitation through the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. Now, let's see some examples of unsustainable practices. The first example is the overuse of groundwater in Punjab. The Green Revolution in the 1960s introduced water-intensive crops, like paddy crops, leading to excessive groundwater extraction. This unsustainable practice has caused severe groundwater depletion, threatening long-term agricultural viability. And the result of this excessive groundwater extraction is that, now we need to dig much deeper to get water, earlier groundwater was available at lesser depth, we didn't need to dig too deep to get it. And this practice is further depleting the water reserves and making it harder to sustain agriculture. The second example is urban sprawl in Bengaluru. The city's rapid growth as a tech hub since the 1990s has led to deforestation and the loss of green cover. Expanding urban areas disrupt ecosystems and worsen issues like water scarcity and urban heat islands. And third example is industrial pollution in Kanpur. Kanpur's leather industry, a major economic driver, has caused severe pollution by releasing untreated effluents into the river Ganga. This has harmed not only aquatic life, but also water quality and public health, despite the efforts like Namami Gange Mission. Turn to next slide, Steps Towards Sustainable Development To achieve sustainability, we must focus on three key areas. First is, technological innovation, which involves promoting energy-efficient and clean technologies. An example of this is, the adoption of electric vehicles, under the FAME scheme, which stands for Faster Adoption and Manufacturing of Hybrid and Electric Vehicles. Second is, grassroots empowerment, which focuses on engaging local communities in sustainable resource management. Initiatives like, Joint Forest Management in Orissa, exemplify this approach. And last one is, education and awareness, which is crucial for spreading knowledge about sustainability. Including sustainability topics in our school curriculum and running awareness campaigns can help too. Eco clubs in schools are a great example of this. It encourages students to adopt green practices. Now proceed to next slide, India's challenges and opportunities. India faces several challenges like population pressure, which has increases demand for resources, air pollution in cities like Delhi, and water scarcity, which is particularly severe, in regions like Bundelkhand. However, India also has significant opportunities as well. Expanding solar and wind energy can meet energy needs sustainably. The country's rich biodiversity can be leveraged to promote ecotourism, benefiting both the economy and the environment. Additionally, organic farming can improve rural livelihoods while reducing environmental damage. And now, we will conclude the today's topic. Sustainable development is more than just a policy framework. It is a philosophy of coexistence. Whether through small actions like reducing waste or large-scale initiatives like promoting renewable energy, every effort counts. And this is the end of today's session. Thank you, everyone, for your attention.
In our next session, we'll study Unit 2 of MAD002, Parameters of Sustainable Development. Have a great day.